Jo here with Annie Josos. So today, my video is basically about <laughs> cleaning this poor excuse for a crafting area. And <laughs> in order to do that, I thought, well, I'll get out some projects that I'm working on. I'll have to clear the space and I could show um, you guys what I'm working on um, and why I'm working on it. So basically, my craft area is a disaster area. If I can move the camera a little bit, I'll show you. And then I'll show you what the show and tell is about with the cards, um, postcards we're going to make. Um, we're going to be doing some golden books, little golden books, junk journals. I'll show you about those in a second. But here's my, <laughs> this is just my main crafting desk. If I can move it and not have um, too much of an issue there. Oh, yep, too much of an issue. All right, hang on. <laughs> it's a disaster. Um, but, you know, they say, a, what do they say? A, um, a messy desk is a, I don't know what they say, busy desk or something like that. Either way, my desk is much too messy. And I thought, well, I'll get all my projects together that I'm working on, and I'll show you guys, and then that will encourage me to clean my desk. It's already, if you can believe it, <laughs> better than it was about 20 minutes ago. So anyway, so the first thing um, is these cards we're working on and we don't really know if there's gonna be craft fairs this year. So, and folks that do cards know that it's hit or miss. Like you're either selling every card you have and everybody's like, oh my gosh, you know, do you have any more? Can I get an order? Or you come back with the same amount of cards that you left with. It's it's never a happy, there's no happy medium. It's either feast or famine. So um, I'm under the assumption that we're probably not gonna have as many craft fairs this year as we normally do. There are two that I'm hoping for that we really, um, I'm super hoping happens, but I also understand with the pandemic that maybe it's not gonna happen. And I'm going to be super bummed, really, 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 really bummed. There's one I really, really, really want to go to. It was just so much fun. It was my first craft fair last year. It was just, just great. The people were just so wonderful and kind. And just, I really want to go to that one, if at all possible. Like, I'll wrap myself in bubble wrap and a mask and goggles and whatever it takes. But then I figure, well, you know, you can't put other people at risk. And it's not safe. It's not safe. But I would go. So, um... Yeah, if we don't get to go, I will be disappointed. But maybe next year we'll get to go. But anyway, just in case we do get to go, I have cards and stuff ready. But I'm not going to be selling them as an actual, like, card. If you see my other videos from last season, you can see I made cards and sold them and that sort of stuff. But this year, again, with what's going to happen with the craft fairs, and is it going to be, you know, in person? Are we going to be, you know, not able to go? I decided... I'll get some cards, I'll make some cards, and then um, put them in the junk journals that I make. Now, I usually add in postcards anyway. My Christmas journals last year did have um, Christmas cards in them, but this year I think I'm going to add three or four completely handmade, completely um, colored, painted, all that kind of stuff by me, um, you know, or um, any that I find at other thrift stores that are handmade those are few and far between but you can find them sometimes where someone spent a whole lot of time and made a bunch of cards and then stuck them on a shelf and they're forgotten about and you find them you know 30 years later literally that happened to me about I guess maybe eight nine months ago I actually was looking for postcards to do some projects and posted in one of the um, forums and a very nice lady called messaged and dropped off three boxes of vintage postcards that I think her mother-in-law had gotten, uh, collected over the years, passed away, never got to use them. I have since used them in projects and when I was using um, the pen pal stuff through Swapbot and stuff. So you can find some stuff. It's just sometimes takes a little looking, but since I can't really wait and hope for that, I've got to get active on making them just in case, cross my fingers, um, we do have the craft here. And if not, I'm going to need these cards to put into journals. So anyway, so this is my just short little show and tell. These are the cards. I'll show you the postcards and I'll show you my golden books. So, and I'm going to link, um, I'm going to tell you about the golden book fiasco that I've had. <laughs> um, and uh, link to who I think does a fabulous job down in the comments or in the description. Okay, so here's the first cards. Most of these are um, Stampin' Up. Some are not. Some are stuff that we just basically found a die and said, oh, this is going to look amazing. 
Then, of course, I have the um, Gemini to use for embossing. Um, these are just absolutely cute. Um, and I'll show you my favorite. This one's Christmas Wishes. It's so cute. Um, I am not a Stamping Up rep. I don't have anything to do with Stamping Up. I just get um, the embossing folders and stuff. And everything that I buy is usually secondhand. I'm a big, super big believer in repurposing um, recycling, um, giving back to the community in which I live. So I don't buy hardly anything retail. I really try to avoid it. It's also more cost effective. So this one's pretty cute. Here's a season filled with warmth. Here's to a season filled with warmth, comfort, and good cheer. And this little thing opens up. Wishing you all the best. Just so cute. And then this one is one of my favorites. I'm actually probably going to keep this and give it to the hubs for Christmas. Hope you have a wonderful Christmas. And all these are blank inside. If you, you know, whoever gets it can write their own. Um, oh, okay. So I, so I pick up one that is <laughs> blank inside. I love this die. I was also able to find, or um, die, you know, the punch. Um, I was also able to find this as a punch by Fiskars in a smaller version pointing the other way. It's fabulous. Um, we go. And all these are 3D. Some have gems. Some have um, been painted with marker. Some have colored pencil. Um, this one's cute, merry and bright. And again, most are blank inside. I don't remember putting any anything in them, so I don't know. <laughs> um, there we go. But again, these were made over quite a while. So this one's just simple. Merry Christmas. Fabulous. Sweet Christmas wishes. There we go. Happiest Christmas wishes. These are just so fabulous. Merriest Christmas wishes. May your Christmas be wrapped up in holiday spirit. Cute. This one's super cute. Deck the halls. Balls of holly. Uh, that one is adorable. Um, and then we've got sending warm Christmas wishes. This is cute. And then winter cheer. My husband and I are torn on which, which, um, same snowman, obviously, but which one we like better. I don't know. We're, we're torn on that one. So here's winter cheer, winter cheer. And actually I did a bunch of these last year with the winter cheer. Um, I think it was echo park. I'm not sure who has these. I'm not sure, but it was similar to this. Um, and here's a deer again, flipped over, happiest Christmas wishes. This one I love. I don't know why. I just do. Very cute. Just absolutely adorable. This one, I don't know. Well, I guess I didn't do that. Okay. So have a holly jelly Christmas. It's very cute. Um, here's to a season filled with warmth, comfort, and good cheer. And this is the, if you saw my thing the other day, trying to figure out how to do... <laughs> The pocket, I probably should have done it this way. I probably should have had the um, flappy thing tuck over on the inside and then the design on the outside, but I don't know what I don't know what I was thinking. Maybe I wasn't thinking. And then this is the last one. Merry Christmas. Uh, I can hear without wrecking them. There we go. So those are the Christmas cards. Currently, that'll be in some of the journals. I think I've got supplies to do eight to ten journals this season so next thing I'm gonna do is I've taken my scraps and um, I am going to be making postcards out of them so and what I'll do is since they are gonna be actually mailed I'm not gonna get too crazy with the designs but these are actually scraps I'll show you in a second from the golden books I'm working on. So here's what I have. And then some of them are not going to be um, big enough to have this on here. Some will, some won't. So what I have, and if you saw my messy desk pan a minute ago, you'll see. I've got this, which is this cute little postcard. It says correspondence address only. And then, because I like to have, I like the way this looks. It says it's a postcard and you get a little stamp area. So I found this. This was actually a set that I got. I guess it was at the Salvation Army. 
and the whole set I realized it and I think that it was like 75 cents is um and these are stamping up too see most of my stuff is all stamping up but it's all second hand um which is great because you know what if we don't if folks like me don't go ahead and thrift and repurpose stuff you know it's going to end up in a landfill or to waste or something like the books that I use all the books that I use are going to be tossed um, I'm a huge reader, an avid proponent of reading. I read all the time to the point of I don't sleep a whole lot because um, I'm always reading something and I have to physically, you know, like turn my phone off, turn my, you know, mind off and put the book down and go to sleep. But um, uh, where I, I was going on a rambling tangent there. But anyway, so basically I'm a big proponent of repurposing. So if books are going to be tossed anyway and they're in not good shape, I take and repurpose them and you'll see I'm going to make a video for doing bookmarks and turning them into Christmas bookmarks, gift tags, all kinds of stuff from books that were literally going to be thrown away. So anyway, so I got this set. So what the set is, I might as well just show it to you on here. And this is what I'm going to put on everything this year, handmade by me. Okay, so uh, let's see. Where's the rest of this? Set? Okay, so there's part of the set. And I'm guessing it was one set. I have another set that's like a postal thing. But it's not, um, it's just like decorations. Not so that I can actually put it on and be like U.S. mail worthy, for lack of a better term. So, so we got the snail mail. You could probably post it on, pop that on there somewhere. And then you got your little play stamp here. So, I'll, I can just do one super quick and show you how it will look. Um, where's my, and again, I can't woo, tell you how much I love <laughs> Lawn Fawn, love their stuff. All right. This is one thing I'm going to tell you. I paid retail for this. I think it was like four or $5. Gosh, back a couple months ago, the rest of them are all my ink stamps, my ink pads and stuff. Again, come from thrift store, Goodwill, whatever. But the black Lawn Fawn is fabulous because um, I couldn't find any of these in any of the thrift stores. It's always like Excelsior or I don't know, some other names of these ink pads, but, but they like, if you touch them too quick, they run, um, they don't really hold up. So if I'm going to do black, it's always Lawn Fawn black. So, all right, so let's, let's just do one here real quick. This is probably, yeah. So we're going to do it here and we'll just make it up. I don't know, down here maybe. I don't know. Where do you want to put it? Let's put it up here. All right. So do it as a postcard here. Can't really see because I don't want to put my big old head in the way of the camera. And then you got your place stamp here. I actually mailed two the other day. Um, one to my uncle and one to my dad. And I took it to the lady at the counter. And it was like, like that much, like a quarter of a quarter of a half an inch or something. It was like barely over, but I put the extra stamp on it just in case because you know there's going to be no return address, so it won't know where to go back to. So um, that's how easy it is. And then if you want to, you can just put your little thing here. And there you go. You could also do it on the bottom, the top, and there's a super quick postcard for ones that won't fit this. Okay, so let's do that. I'll put that on a little stamp brush here in a second. And we're wondering why my desk is a mess, right? <laughs> Put these away. I'll clear those off in a minute. And then I'm going to show you my golden books and tell you my golden books dilemma. So my golden books dilemma is I, gosh, I don't know how many years ago. I happened to see someone who had made a golden book um, uh, junk journal. And I was like, oh my gosh, I need to learn how to do that. Because it was really fabulous. And I could not find anyone who was doing them the way I've liked. I've seen people that, um, really cute, that have like soft covers, ones that have the, uh, I think it's called the cinch, where you punch holes in it with this machine and put the rings in it. But then I priced the rings and I'm like, Jiminy Christmas, for every um, book that I want to make, it's going to be, you know, like $5.82 or something for like two sets of rings. I'm like, that's, that's crazy. I can't do that. So, um, I kept looking and then I found someone who was doing something inside and either way you have to rip the covers off. So then I found a video um, for um, Amber at Lyric Lover Crafts who had the punch rings who did it fabulously well. And I saw another one and I kind of, <laughs> I just didn't, I, I stopped watching the video and I'm not going to say who it was or anything, but 
it just kind of really turned me off. I mean, the book was um, just, I don't know. I don't know how to say that it was just not cool. It just wasn't cool. So <laughs> I don't even know where I saw the video. I don't even think it was on YouTube. But it was someone who was doing a book and just destroying it. Just I want to leave the books intact so that if the reader wanted to, they could still follow the story and it keeps the, it preserves the story um, of the book. I, I don't want to throw the pages away and just use the pictures. And I, again, I, I just saw the video. I was like, oh my gosh, and just turned it off because they didn't want to keep the video. They didn't want to keep, or didn't want to keep the book intact. And I don't know, I guess that I'm a big, as I said earlier in the video, I'm a big proponent of reading and keeping books the way they are and salvaging them for a repurposing effort at, as the last resort. Um, so yeah, kind of just turned me off. So anyway, so back to the golden book thing. So I found Amber at Lyric Lover Crafts and saw the way, um, she was, if you hear that growling, by the way, that is my dog guarding her buddy biscuit cookie <laughs> from Hoot. So anyway, if you hear that, that's what that is. Um, he gets too close to her cookie. She's never going to eat it when she leaves. He's going to snag it, but <laughs> she's guarding it until she's ready to leave it. Anyway. So she showed a technique and I am going to um, do the similar technique for my books. Um, and basically what she did was she showed how she put in her pages and then put in this, the um, cardstock, kept the story intact, kept, um, you know, just, I just loved it. I, I have no other way to say it. She, you know, pockets and stuff in here and even gave us a tip, you know, for the folks watching, um, gave us a tip on where to get them done. So thank you, Amber. I have already actually um, contacted our local printer, who of course I saw your video on Friday at like 7 p.m. I'm like, oh my God, it was too late. So I emailed them, they won't be in until tomorrow, um, I'm assuming. And then I'm gonna find out what's gonna cost to punch three holes. And I've got my rings already. But, and I'm going to link her video down in the um, description too because it's just so fabulous. I just love Amber. I've been watching her for quite a while. She doesn't know me <laughs> from Adam. But I just really like her attitude uh, toward the books. I like the fact that she wanted to preserve the integrity of the book while still repurposing it and turning it to something else that someone else can use and enjoy for many more years. So I've been on the hunt for little books. So these are the first 12 I got. Um... I lady had them on Facebook for five dollars um, so I literally drove an hour and 15 minutes to get them because I'm anxious to try so there's my first one it's gonna be Mickey's Christmas journal the night before Christmas and this is also going to encourage me to clear up my desk because there's no way I can do this and lay it out the way um, Amber had recommended uh, and still have room on this desk so and then I've got one more thing to show you guys before I finish up so here's Frosty's Snowman. Now one of these is actually from um, one of the original printings. I'm not sure if that's one, um, which one it was, but one of them I think was like the original or maybe second printing. That one I'm going to see, sort of ask and see if I should keep it. Yeah, this is 1953. This is the original printing of the book. So I don't know what I'm going to do with this one. Um, I'm going to do some research and figure out if there's anything like maybe this could be donated somewhere um i don't know i don't know what the value is of this so i don't want to um you know if it could go into somebody's collection or museum could be donated somewhere anyway so this one i don't think i'm gonna do anything with yet just because it's the first printing um and the animals christmas eve the little christmas elf mickey's christmas carol rudolph i think there's two rudolphs in this one rudolph the red-nosed reindeer the sweetest christmas i'm a huge winnie the pooh fan almost 12 days of christmas beauty and the beast i'm not sure she's in a christmas dress i don't know what that is but anyway then rudolph the red-nosed reindeer shines again so those are the books that i'm going to be doing and then i've got a few more um that are on the way that i'll be doing i think i'll have a total of like 34 of those maybe 36 of those um in time for the holiday season again if we don't have craft fairs it's not going to do me a lot of good, so it'll all be in my Etsy store, and that'll be linked in the description as well. So, again, why we're doing the cards as we're doing them, and they'll be in the books for um, uh, the journals that I'm doing. So, okay, so my last two items that will are my Christmas embroidered toilet paper. So, 
Um, if you know, you follow me, you know that I do a lot of embroidery, custom embroidery on toilet paper. So this is Christmas, just got real. And then this one, and what we're going to do is, I guess I should probably just pull this off here now, because this isn't going to be given anywhere. This is just a sample. Um, is you got your embroidery and there's going to be, you could put money in here and then wrap it up. And all of my, all of the items that I list in my Etsy store, the toilet paper rolls come with a ribbon and a card and all that sort of stuff if you'd like it. So anyway, so here is what we came up with is Christmas double stash. And we thought this would be really cute for, you've got like, um, I don't know, somebody out of town, somebody you haven't seen in a while, but you want to give them something, you know what to give them. And with toilet paper, <laughs> we all know what happened with the toilet paper crisis. People got crazy. Um, so this is a double stash. You've got your roll that you can keep as an emergency. And the stash is going to be the cash inside. Um, and my coffee's done. <laughs> so that's what this roll is going to be. Um, and I don't know. We sold out of all the Christmas rolls that we had this season. But again, with the pandemic, we don't know what's going to happen. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to get pictures of all these. They'll be custom ordered in my Etsy store. And hopefully they'll bring a smile to some faces and people will get double stashed with some toilet paper and some cash. <laughs> so anyway, thank you so much for watching my video. Um, this will help me clear out my area. So maybe when I do my next video, which I think is going to be the bookmarks um, from the Collier's magazines and the woman's world or, um, woman's household magazine. We're going to turn those into bookmarks and I will show you hopefully a nice clear desk that doesn't look like a tornado went through it. Anyway, if you haven't already subscribed, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.